Hello and welcome back to Football Daily, where today we are analysing 10 players who ruin transfers. Let's get into it. 10. Dwight York Dwight York had a monumental impact at Man United between 1998 and 2002. His partnership with Andy Cole in 98-99 saw them score 53 goals between them firing the Red Devils to just the fourth treble in UEFA history. But by January 2002, York was no longer in the first team. With the arrivals of Van Nistelrooy and Forlan the previous summer, for a combined £35.6 million, pushing the now 30-year-old down the pecking order. With Sir Alex rumoured to be unhappy with his relationship with glamour model Jordan, he attempted to offload the Trinidad and Tobago International to Steve McLaren's Middlesbrough and replace him with Paolo Di Canio. Ultimately, neither of the moves happened, with Fergie revealing to the Guardian newspaper in May that year that York wouldn't go to Middlesbrough, because between him and his agent, they asked for a terrible amount of money. As a result, Fergie couldn't bring in the Italian hothead who he labelled a fantastic player who would have given us a terrific lift. But ultimately, it wasn't enough to save York. He didn't play again from January and was eventually sold to Blackburn Rovers that summer for £2 million. 9. Robbie Savage Before we move on to our next section, just a quick reminder to subscribe to Football Daily and hit that notification bell to never miss one of our fantastic top 10s. Despite being a target for abuse from fans up and down the country, Man United Academy graduate Robbie Savage was actually a perfectly able Premier League player. A League Cup winner with Leicester, he might have only ever represented bottom half sides, but he still made 346 Premier League appearances more than Seaman, Keown and Peter Schmeichel. But by January 2007, the Welshman was struggling to hold down a starting spot at Mark Hughes's Blackburn. It was at this point that Roy Keane, as he later revealed in his 2014 autobiography, The Second Half, tried to sign him for his Sunderland side. Keane got permission from his old teammate to call him and, in his own words, it went to his voicemail. Hi, it's Robbie, what's up? Like the Budweiser ad. I thought, I can't be f***ing signing that. In the end, Savage signed for Derby and was powerless to prevent their relegation with a league record low 11 points, whilst Keane was fired within the year. 8. Nabil Jadi We'd excuse you for not recognising the name Nabil Jadi, but he was once one of European football's most promising youngsters. In 2013, Jadi helped Anderlecht win the prestigious Viraggio Cup, alongside the likes of Jordan Lukaku, Mbemba and Dendonka, whilst also captaining Morocco to their first ever Under-17 World Cup. Interest was building in Jardy and come January 2014, with six months remaining on his deal, he was told by the club that he wouldn't play unless he signed a new contract. In order to sign that deal, Andalek stipulated that he had to change agents from Christian Negawe, who has also worked for Batshuayi in Origi, to Moji Boyat, then one of the most powerful men in Belgian football. Boyat discouraged him from signing Andalek's proposed five-year deal and claimed there was interest from four clubs – Arsenal, Liverpool, Inter and AC Milan. Jaddy said he wanted to join Arsenal because they, quote, dared to give young players a chance. But the move never materialised, and Jaddy was sold to Udinese against his will. The Pozzo family farmed him out on loan to clubs including Granada, Ascoli, and Greek club Asteris Tripoli, none of which were prepared to give the tricky winger a chance. Fast forward to today, and Boyat has been arrested for money laundering and match fixing, whilst Jaddy is now playing in Morocco a living embodiment of how bad advice and mistreatment can ruin any player's career. 7. Patrick Schick Rewind to June 2017 and Patrick Schick had just finished a phenomenal debut campaign with Sampdoria. Signed the previous summer for just £3.5 million from Sparta Prague, after just 38 senior appearances, the 22-cap Czech belied his inexperience to score 13 goals in 35 appearances. That might not sound incredible, but his 11 Serie A goals, at an average of one every 137 minutes, was enough to attract the attention of Juve's Max Allegri. Fresh from defeat in the Champions League final, the Bianconeri earmarked him as the ideal long-term successor to 31-year-old Mario Mandzukic. A €30 million Euro deal was agreed and the announcement photos of Schick in a Juve strip were set to go live. Unfortunately for the player, he then failed his medical examination due to a heart problem, before bizarrely signing for Roma the following month. Schick has recovered from an underwhelming spell in Rome to shine for RB Leipzig this term, with a goal contribution every 99 league minutes. And whilst it's harsh to say his health problems ruined his transfer, who knows what might have happened if he'd passed that medical. 6. Frank Worthington from the unfortunate to the ridiculous now, Frank Worthington was a former striker capped eight times by England who represented the likes of Huddersfield, Leicester and Bolton. 
Despite winning a golden boot with Bolton in 1979 and helping Southampton finish as runners-up five years later, Worthington ultimately ruined his shot at the big time. In 1972, having shone for Huddersfield Town for the previous four years, Liverpool's Bill Shankly came in for Worthington. The move though fell through with Worthington failing his medical due to high blood pressure. Shankly gave the notorious party boy a week to recover before trying it again. But rather than lay low and recover, Worthington flew to Mallorca for a week of parting and booze, unsurprisingly failing his medical on his return. He eventually signed for Leicester City and could only watch on as Liverpool won 11 league titles and four European Cups prior to Worthington's retirement in 1992. 5. Ali Sissoko Ali Sissoko is best remembered in this country for one year on loan at Liverpool before a three-year spell at Aston Villa which included their first relegation to the second tier in 28 years. But there was once a time when the Frenchman was one of the most desirable left-backs in world football. Signed by Porto in January 2009 from Vittoria Setubal, Sissoko would shine immediately. He went unbeaten through all 15 of his league appearances, helping Los Dragaos to a domestic double, whilst also earning plaudits for his performances against United's Ronaldo in the Champions League. That summer, AC Milan, just two years on from their latest Champions League triumph, came calling. A 15 million euro deal was thrashed out and all the fullback had to do was pass the Rosaneri's notoriously stringent medical. But an issue with his teeth was discovered which they feared could bizarrely cause spinal issues in the future. He passed his second medical but Milan tried to renegotiate the deal on the basis of their concerns and it collapsed. Sissoko instead joined Lyon where he would win just one solitary trophy in three seasons, whilst AC Milan would go on to win their 18th and most recent Scudetto just two years later. 4. Eden Hazard Back in May 2012, Eden Hazard was one of the hottest properties in Europe. The 21-year-old had contributed a ridiculous 36 goals in 38 league games, as his boyhood club Lille finished third, just a year on from helping Les Dogs to win just their third French title. That summer, Hazard was being chased by all of Europe's elite, with Chelsea, Man City and Man United particularly interested. Sir Alex, like many others, personally scouted him and told RMC Sport in 2012 that Hazard is a very good player. But everyone knows what happened next. Hazard, inspired by their recent Champions League win, signed for Chelsea. United instead turned their attention to Borussia Dortmund's Shinji Kagawa, and Sir Alex was in bullish mood at the Japanese's unveiling. On Hazard, he said, To me, it's a lot of money. He's a good player, but £34 million. Before continuing, It is just getting ridiculous now. In the Hazard deal, Chelsea paid the agent £6 million. It's all about what you think is value for a player. We all know what happened next. Kagawa struggled to adapt, lasting just two seasons at Old Trafford, whilst Hazard was the creative fulcrum of a side that won six trophies, including two Premier League titles in seven seasons. Fergie and his other new signing Van Persie might have won the 2012-13 title, but there is no debate about who got the better long-term deal. 3. Paolo Dybala According to an independent article written the day after deadline day in August 2019, the facts were simple. Spurs wanted to sign him, Juventus wanted to sell him, and Paolo Dybala wanted to move. In the end, it was pretty painful for Spurs. They fought off initial interest from Man United, who were put off by Dybala's £350,000 per week wage demands and spent three weeks trying to sign the forward. He was supposedly keen to join the Champions League finalists and work under his compatriot Maurizio Pochettino. Spurs agreed a £70 million fee with the Bianconeri, who were keen to sell a player who had underwhelmed in 1819, contributing just nine league goals, his lowest return since 12-13 at Palermo, in order to fund Sarri's rebuild. The sticking point, however, in this extraordinarily complex transfer was image rights. Dybala had sold his to a multi-based company called Star Image Company, which was owned by his former agent Pierre Paolo Trialuzzi. This meant that Spurs would have to therefore buy not only the player, but those rights rumoured in the Italian press to cost upwards of £40 million. The move ultimately collapsed. Pochettino was fired after winning just three of their opening 12 league games, and with Spurs currently languishing in eighth, their chances of signing a rejuvenated Dybala have seemingly evaporated forever. 2. Gary McAllister Two-time PFA Team of the Year member Gary McAllister is perhaps best known for his spell at Liverpool between 2000 and 2002, where he played a key role in the Reds' treble of trophy wins in 2001. But rewind to 1990 and the current Rangers assistant manager had spent the last three seasons playing in the second division with Leicester City. That June, League Cup champions Nottingham Forest, fresh off finishing ninth in the top tier, came calling. Brian Clough was keen to bring in the central midfielder, 
but things went awry when McAllister turned up at Forrest's Wilford Lane training ground wearing cowboy boots. Clough's put down has entered football folklore. Who do you think you are, young man? Bloody John Wayne? With a typically old school Clough less than impressed, Forrest pulled out of the deal. McAllister and his cowboy boots went on to sign for Leeds in a £1 million switch, where he helped them win the first division title in 1992, a year before Clough took Forrest down in his final campaign at the helm. 1. Bruno Fernandes de Souza By far the darkest inclusion on this list, Bruno Fernandes de Souza, or Bruno, had a transfer cancelled for a very disturbing reason. Having come through the academy at Atletico Mineiro before transferring to Corinthians, Bruno's career kicked off when he was loaned out to Flamengo in 2006. Over the next four years, he made his name as the Ruben Negro's number one, scoring the occasional set piece and even replacing Fabio Luciano as club captain. Having been linked with Barcelona in 2007, three years later, AC Milan came in for the shot stopper who was on the verge of the national setup at the time. That was until the truth came out. Bruno was found guilty of murdering his mistress, Eliza Samudio, who was pregnant with his child. The court heard how he conspired with his friends, who then tortured and strangled the model before feeding her body to his Rottweilers. Bruno served less than a third of his 22-year sentence and temporarily signed for then second division club Boa Esporte in 2017, who cancelled his contract after three major sponsors withdrew from the club. Currently a free agent, it's little surprise no one has picked up this disgusting human being. So guys, that's all we've got time for on 10 players who ruin transfers. Sorry for that slightly dark one at number one, but we couldn't miss him out having heard that story. Did we miss any out according to you guys though? Let us know in the comments down below. Don't forget to like the video, leave a comment and subscribe to the channel. Look after yourselves and your family, wash your hands and I'll see you next time. Bye!